Hello, artists, aspiring artists, and hell, anybody who cares. Welcome to the Artist Bootcamp. I'm Trey, your workout partner, and today on tap, we have, for the 15th, I'm sorry, no, the 16th, the 16th. So what we have on tap for the 16th of February, shape, heads and hands, mannequin, anatomy, sculpture, and gesture. I won't forget the hands this time. We have a lot to do, so let's get to it. All right, so here we have shapes, which is our standard warm up. New layer. We got our shapes faded back. We hit the B for the brush tool. This time, let's do a greenish. And let's go. Just stretch it on our way to become the best we can be. The best we can be. Our routine is pretty strong now. We know what we're doing. Our job's not done. We got 28 days but we're well on the path, well on the path. Now imagine if you did all of this for say a year, two years, three years, four years, five. Can you imagine that? doing all of this for five years. Pyramids, triangles, let's do it. Focus, try focus, 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 focus. All right, shapes. Now we move on to 3D shapes. New layer. Let's put that above the 3D light shapes and let's do blue. Cubes, cubes, cubes. Cubes, cubes, cubes. Trying to be organic and authentic, shooting from the hip, just making the lines however I see fit. And boy, am I not perfect. But I'm still here. All right? Consistency, I believe, always beats hard work. If you're consistent and you work hard, even better. But if you're inconsistent, that's a killer. So I try to be consistent. Uh, I try to have my minimum set and rain, sleet or snow, you do that minimum set. Now don't beat yourself up if you, you know, something happens and you miss a day, you get sick, you got something important to do. You know, it's not to stress you out because things happen, life happens, but still once you fall off, the next day you hop back on and you try to break that new string, that new sequence of just showing up and being consistent. And there we go. Shapes and 3D shapes. 
Are you ready? You're loose? You good? Now, let's move on to the next activity. Next up is heads and hands. We have the figure here, which is myself, looking off upwards, three quarters, to my left. But it's screen right. So my left is screen right. Now let's... But first, let's have what we do the the skeleton, shall we? This is the skull, three quarters, looking off to my what, left, but this is screen right. So let's fade this back with V, for number four, for forty percent opacity. New layer the brush tool with B and I'm doing this from a, a Photoshop. But you can do whatever program that you enjoy. Okay, so we have the cranium. All that is the cranium. Houses the brain. And we have dips in where the eye socket comes back out for the cheekbone. Cheekbone goes in and attaches for the upper teeth. Upper teeth, while the lower teeth are attached by the mandible, which is controlled by muscles that help you chew. And we have the side plane here. Kind of see this highlight light here. And we'll take some of that and incorporate that into the side plane. Went around the eye cavity, went around the cheekbone, right. going down towards the chin. That is more or less the side plane. Our hairline would be up here. Eye line would be here. Nose line underneath the nasal cavity. On a fleshy human being, that would be cartilage and the nose. And noses come in all shapes and sizes. So we got the eyebrow ridge and the, the cranium goes into that eyebrow ridge to come out go in but it creates a little shelf to keep the sun from hitting you directly in the eyes it creates a little shadow up here and that is three quarters skull off to screen right now let's look at an actual human being thank you Horatio we have the heads and this is me looking upwards to my left screen right so this is three quarters three quarters up so let's drop this back v4 let's turn off the skulls layer make that invisible back to the faces new layer Drawing on top with B for the brush tool. Cranium. Going down to my eyebrow ridge. Coming inwards. Coming out for the cheek. Going down. Mandible. Coming down. Coming towards the chin. I'm looking this way. Side plane is here, coming down, backwards around the eye socket, and going down for the chin and coming towards the, the chin. Sorry, coming around the cheek and going down and into the chin. So we have my mouth line, the bottom of my nose line, my eye line, 
my eyebrow ridge, and the hairline. The hair follow some of these contours. And the ear is between the eye and the nose. Right. And that is my skull, or well, head. Got a neck, neck. The underside of the chin. Oh, yeah. And that is heads, three quarters, looking off to the screen right. Next up, hands. All right, so here we have hands. I forgot to do last time, but <laughs> here we are. So, we got the hand and position. Let's V for the move tool and do four for 40%. Make a new layer on top and let's, let's draw this hand. B for the brush tool, it's the size. So let's think about the box, right? I think the box is easier to see here. So we have this shape more or less, All right? This is the top plane and it comes down. And there's a side plane here coming down. At least that's what I see. So let's build off of that. This is part with the thumb coming down. And then we have the index finger. There's a space between the fingers. And then we have the middle finger curled. So there's straights and there's curves. Right. Straights, curves. Straights, straights. We have the joints where movement happens. Let's fade this back a bit. Construction lines, construction lines. So we'll fade back these construction lines and we'll see. B for the brush tool, knuckles. We don't want it too pronounced. We just want indications of where knuckles are. And then the wrist goes down into the arm or the forearm. The forearm into the proper upper arm. And that is the hand. All right, so it's time for Manatomy. Mannequin Anatomy. So first we do our usual Let's go to the layer. We have a Manny here. New layer. And let's let's draw on this guy. First we do simple shapes. So first we got circle for the basic head placement. Make it an oval. And then Cut that half. That's the eye line. 
nose line, brow line, mouth line, and hairline. He's slightly looking this way. So we have an indication of general direction. We have a side plane happening around the orbital bone and the cheekbone going down to the chin. Now let's do his rib cage can either be a circle or an egg shape, which is common. You see a lot of artists do that. Or it could be a box. So it's about here. Here, you see a bit of the top of the box. Side plane. Front plane. Hips. There's a little, a little shift in the hips. Look at that. Because he's standing on his dominant leg. And we can see the side plane again, this light sitting that side plane, casting this in shadow. So we indicate that, that hip tilt. Now let's do circles for joints, shoulders, elbows, elbows, wrist, wrist, knees, knees, ankle, ankle and then we do cylinders for the limbs so you got the arm limbs you got the thighs and you have the lower leg cylinders He's got feet, so he needs something to stand on. And hands. But well, we've all done this before, right? This is day 16, so we're not new to this. You can put in a, an indication of a spine. And that is the basic simple shapes for this mannequin, which is a proto form human. If you can do this, you can do a human. So now let's go over to our anatomy. We got the skeleton, we got the muscles on top, painted in different colors. So we have the trapezius, which is along the back and shoulder and actually goes into a triangle, mirroring it on both sides. We have the deltoid for the shoulder, the pectoralis, which goes from the clavicle, sternum, up, attaching to the ribs, and inserting into the humerus bone. Speaking of the humerus bone, we have the tricep on the back of the humerus, the brachialis on the side, the outside and the bicep, the brachialis on the outside, bicep on the inside. The brachioradialis comes out from the outer edge of the bottom of the humerus. Humerus bone comes down and into the inner side of your forearm. Now we have extensors and flexors, which are many muscles that control our hand movements. We have the external obliques, which are on the side of your body. We've got the rectus abdominis, the upper and the lower. All right, three upper, belly button, lower going into the pelvis. We have the gracilis of the thigh, the inner thigh, All right, connecting from the pelvis down and into the leg. We have the adductor longus underneath that. Right? Going from inner hip, seems like going to the outer. 
we have the sartorius, which from the hip, cutting into the inside of your thigh and going towards your knee, we have the rectus femoris, which is a large muscle on the, the middle of your thigh. The vastus lateralis, which is on the outside of your thigh. We have the gastronemius, gastronemius, the calf muscle that can be seen on the inside of the calf. Also on the back, we have the patella, which is the kneecap. And then from the kneecap is the patellar tendon from the kneecap down towards the ankle, down towards the ankle anterior tibialis, which is next to the patellar tendon. Right. And then we have the fibularis longus, or the peroneus, and that's on the outside of your calf. So gastrocnemius on the inside calf. On the outside is the fibularis longus. And between the fibularis longus and the anterior tibialis is the extensure digitorum longus, and that's that red. So here, going towards your ankle. And that are your muscle groups for your body. So let's now map that to our mannequin. So let's start, let's make this another color. Let's say a greenish. So we have the trapezius. Right, going along the shoulder, and it's actually a diamond, right? It's like that. And the pectoralis along the clavicle, which is this bone, and the sternum, We're going down, attaching to your rib cage, and up, and inserting into your humerus bone. But it's not funny when you hide it a certain way. We have the deltoid. We have the deltoid, which is the major part of your shoulder. We have the tricep on the back, the brachialis, and the bicep. So again, the tricep, brachialis, bicep, all making up muscles of your upper arm. Then we have the brachioradialis, comes down and it, let's kind of see it come out a little bit from the outside and then it goes towards the inside of your forearm. Right. We have extensors extensors and flexors within your forearm that help control your wrist. I mean, your, your wrist, hand, and fingers, right? We have the external obliques, the love handles, all that. Latissimus dorsi, I think, is upper external obliques here. Latissimus dorsi, external obliques. We have the uh, rectus abdominis, the upper three, and the lower goes into your pubic bone or pelvis, right? Belly button. We have the gracilis on the inside of your thigh, the adductor longus, from the inside towards the outside, and the sartorius from the hip, coming down and wrapping into or across your thigh to the interior of your thigh and down to your knee. We have the rectus femoris, which is a large bone 
I mean, sorry, a large muscle in the middle of your thigh with the vastus lateralis on the outside. We have the patella, which is your kneecap, and the patellar tendon comes from the patella down towards the ankle. Gastronomius, which is your calf muscle from the inside, see that? There is the anterior tibialis, which is right next to the patellar tendon on the outside of your lower leg. You have the fibularis longus or peroneus on the outside of your lower leg. But between the anterior tibialis and the fibularis longus, Peronius is the extensor digitorum longus that comes down towards the ankle. And those are our muscles mapped out on the mannequin. All right, so now let's do some statuary. We got Michelangelo, Andrea del Verrocchio, David, Donatello's David. So here's David Gian Lorenzo Bernini. He's known for his dynamism and his posing of his sculptures, which is why I greatly enjoy his work. Today we shall be doing, should we do this one or should we do this is the boxer, an ancient statue made in bronze. I think it's uh, showing a boxer or a wrestler of ancient either Roman or Greek. But I've always liked this because it looks like easier he's getting ready or this is after the fight. I think this is after the fight. And he's kind of tired. And... But I like this one. So let's do this in simple shapes. V4 for 40% opacity, go to the layer, and let's make this a red color. B for the brush tool, and circle for his overall head. And we can make that in an oval. He's looking this way. Right, he's looking off, up and away to his right, our screen left. His eye line, his brow line, his hairline. He has a side plane that you can kind of see the shadow. Right, so we wrap that. Comes down around his orbital bone and cheek. And you see it cuts down and then goes towards the cheek. That's a really good shadow definition on that. So his nose is here, his mouth is here. So his ear would be between the nose line and the eye line, so somewhere around. And we can kind of see it here. His neck, but he's got muscular muscles. So we're gonna do the egg shape because I can see that very clearly. All right, see this? His pecs are sitting on top of this egg shaped scaffolding that is his rib cage. And we can indicate the front side by this line. Here's clavicle, clavicle. This would be where his sternum is, his pectoralis. But we'll get there, we'll get there, come on, Trey. So circles for his, well, first hips, come on, Trey. Get it together. So he got the hips, and he's in a seated position. All right. 
but we got to be able to see through the figure. Right? His spine is curved because he's whew, he's exerted himself. Now we have to do some circles for joints. We got the shoulder, shoulder, elbows, elbows, wrist, wrist, knee, underneath his head, two hands, knee, ankle, ankle. And then we connect those with cylinders. So we got cylinders here. Cylinders, All right? We got cylinders for the forearms. And this is all people are made of. Circles, squares, cylinders. Once you get this down, there's nothing you won't know. Nothing you won't be able to draw. Because everything is just basic shapes. You say everything, Trey? Everything. I really like this statue. He's so cool. He's got feet, of course. Feet. And he's got hands. And he has these boxing glove type things on. But we clearly see a thumb. The pad thingy. Let's call it glove. His boxing glove. And his fingers are coming out. So I'm slightly hidden by this hand. And there is the figure. The boxer. Now let's do the muscles. So new layer. I'll change it to a bluish color. And so what do we have? First off, we have the clavicle. See that? And this is a little indentation where the clavicle meets where the humerus is going to hook up to it. The scapula is on the back. Right? It's a flat bone on the back. But see this little divot right here? That's clavicle. Hooks up to the humerus bone. But we have the trapezius, right? And it goes here. And since he's kind of ripped, this is it. And it covers part of the top of the scapula. Latissimus dorsi comes over here, and that covers another part of the scapula. We have the deltoid. All right, you can see the individual. This guy keeps himself in prime condition. Deltoid. We have the sternum coming down, and that is the attachments for his pectoralis. That comes down and inserts into right, the humerus here. But we have the tricep on the back of the arm. Right, look at all that. We have the brachialis. We have the bicep. Right, so we have tricep, brachialis, bicep. And see this? This is the brachioradialis. And it looks like it comes up in and wraps into the inside. There are extensors and flexors in the wrist, well, in the forearm, 
are all of these little muscles that help you move your, your fingers in a very different ways. So we have the bicep, brachialis, tricep, tricep. Brachioradialis would be Okay, so we have the external obliques. Rectus abdominis. That would be rippling as he's, his body is curved. Right, there's this overall curved shape. So this is the soft part that squishes as this is rigid, this is rigid, but there's squishy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna describe it as squishy, right? He, so he can bend his body forward. Some people, when they draw it, they draw a circle here. That's the ball where this part moves and this part moves in relationship to this. But yes, rectus abdominis. We have hip here, which have the gluteus maximus, his buttocks. But we also have the adductor longus on the outside. We have the gracilis on the inside that we can't quite see, but going through it, it's like this, right? Gracilis adductor longus and the rectus femoris is in the middle. His hamstring is on his, you know, the back. Don't pull a hammy. We have, what else? The sartorius that would go from the hip, wrapping down inside of the thigh. On this side, we here, coming down, around, and here. His patella. Is that this hand patella so we can see the tendon coming down towards his ankle his calf muscle or the gastronemius gastronemus is this better seen from this side right. so you got the patellar tendon following along the bones, the tibia and the fibula in his lower leg. All right, the femur is here. Coming here, patella, tibia, fibula. So we have the anterior tibialis. Right. Here on the outside, you can barely see it on this side. Right next to the patellar tendon, we have the fibularis longus, peroneus, on the outside. Outside of his lower leg. Can't quite see on that side, but it's there. And between the anterior tibialis and the fibularis longus, peroneus, is the extensor digitorum longus. And that is our guy, the boxer. Nicely done. And this is him in the seated position.
Nicely done. Now, let's move on to gesture. The final set is gesture. So yesterday we did sports being the theme of gesture. So today's theme, magic and or wizards. If you've ever played D&D or Baldur's Gate 3, or it's a great game. Magic is key. Magic. I think also what Harry Potter has boosted. Well, magic has always been a cool thing for movies and comic books. So let's see, magic. There are all types. Uh, mages, uh, wizards, uh, witches, mm -hmm. curses, elements, like fire, water, etc. Mm -hmm. There are wands, like in Harry Potter, which is what, just a conduit for the magic. But also books, magic books. Um, they usually have robes of some type. Like I think of Gandalf, he was wearing some sort of like a robe. Big hat, but that's not always. Like Harry Potter doesn't have big hat. Well, Professor McGonagall did. Oh, well. But yeah, let's include that hat. A staff. Uh, but yeah, let's see what do we have. What can we think of? Hmm. We can have like a... A mage. He's got to have the hat. And sometimes it's floppy. Sometimes it's not. They're not super muscular. But... They usually have a magic... Rod, staff. Sometimes it looks like a tree branch. Other times, it's whatever you can think of. And they have maybe a belt and their robes. All right, that could be the most basic wizard. <laughs> so yeah, just get out your, your ideas. And usually your first ideas are just the real basic boil down most popular image that pops into your brain about what a what magic what a wizard is right you got magic magic tomes so it has all this jargon and then from this jargon magic like sparklies come out and you know, <laughs> glitter, glitter bomb stuff. Uh, it could be either invisible, almost like telekinesis, or it could have like enough, you could see it like an effect. Mm, what else? What else? Elemental, I think, is one of the most popular ones. Like they can control fireballs. So, Mr. Magic Hands goes fire. And they usually have beards, right? Some kind of a long beard. So, Mr. Magic Hands has his staff and says, fire. And then a fireball shoots out. But it's almost whatever you can think of. Like, would that make a great image? If I was going to you know, take it to watercolor or an illustration? Eh, no, not so much. But say if we 
let's push up the drama. All right, say we have Mr. Magic Hands. And I don't know why I'm calling him that. And he has his hands, his hands up. And he's lifting, I don't know, something that is beyond his body weight with magic. It's like just, he's got these big old boulders coming out of the ground. And he's lifting this with magic or with his mind. What? There's no real, without rules, there's no dis real distinction. If it's magic, it can, you can do anything. Right? And that kind of can be the, let's, like Mr. Magic Hands. And of course, Mr. Magic Hands has the hat. Now that might be a, an, an image. All right, so you have the rocks in the foreground, undefined, but you are focusing on the wizard who is somewhat obscure. Well, we can see him, but there's so much debris and dust. And he's doing this, this feat of magic that is just beyond what anyone can think of because he's Mr. Magic Hands. This is how all illustrations start. It's just a concept, an idea for, I wonder what, what would be cool. <laughs> and each person, each artist has a different, a different idea of what's cool. Right? Some people, wizards aren't cool. They do nothing for them. So say this wizard has, he's got his pipe and he's just, he's pouring over tomes and stuff. He's got like stacks of books. Books to the ceiling books on the floor but he's at his desk he's just going over this over this thick phone book sized tome at his desk he's got his beard his hat's off so maybe he's, his hair is long. He's just looking at this book. All right, and is that a great image? No. It's just an idea to get us started to getting good images. Because you could always think of ways to make this more d dramatic. Like say his, the book is here and he has his face so close to it and he's stroking his beard. His other hand and he still has his pipe Here, looking at this book. It's like, I can't, I can't believe this. Right. It's just 
hunched over. His little curly shoes, his robe, and the desk. But I just did this in a short time, and this is what we do. Just trying to get ideas out. And, and if you hit on one, that is the best one. Or you can combine, say it's not quite this, but it's not quite this and somewhere in, in the middle. Maybe there's a witch, right? And a witch has a broomstick. Maybe if this, this wizard is a witch and she has a broomstick. And maybe that broomstick is also, you know how they ride on broomsticks? So it's like, almost like the Harry Potter version. And you're flying on this broomstick. And that's, that's a cool idea. But what if Instead of flying on a broomstick, you can surf on a broomstick. And so they're riding broomsticks like surfboards. Right? And that is a cool idea because people know about surfing and they're like, hey, Surfing is a known thing. And so you're adding something to something else. So these witches, instead of writing rooms like this, let's say witches from Europe fly like this and witches from Hawaii fly like this. That and it's just this is just chicken scratch, but it gives you an idea. Does she still have the hat? Maybe. Maybe the but they have robes in Hawaii? I don't think so. But maybe they have skirts. Maybe tank tops. And this is the thing. It makes it, makes it more interesting. If you can put a twist, some kind of spin, that because wizards are so known that you know what wizards do. So you don't always have to, you know, flip the script and change a story to be something else. You can go traditional as long as it's interesting. Like Harry Potter was interesting. Uh, Gandalf, interesting. Actually, I think he was kind of, kind of torturing <laughs> little Bilbo in the first one. I was like, what? <laughs> you Of all the houses, you just had to show up at mine? He's like, yeah. Come on, little guy. You know? I don't think that was necessary, but hey, it's a story. You got to get the story moving. And a wizard just showing up on your doorstep is kind of a cool story. Imagine if present day, a wizard came to your house and said, hey, come on, we're going out. And you're like, I don't even know who you are. I'm Mr. Magic Hands, come on, let's go. And then you have adventures 
with a little bit of magic. You know, it could be grand magic, small magic. You know, maybe he pays his bills with a snap of his fingers. Like, no, oh, it's paid. Hey, cool. I can only go up to five dollars. That's it. That's the limit of my magic. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Mm. But yeah, whatever you could think of. So wizards are studious, and so sometimes you can tap into the power by meditating. So say this is Eastern, Eastern wizards, or is it wizards from the Far East? Because magic seems to be universal all over the world. Maybe this guy has a curly beard. And he's bald. And he accesses magic through meditation. So there's his deep thought is accessing. the universe or something. I put whatever you can think of. Maybe a wizard. Only this wizard can control Earth. And they call him Mr. Dirt Mover or Curb Stomper, I don't know. And so this is scene, this is one. And two is when he strikes the ground with his foot, he can cause. chasm to open up. So, a, a chasm opens up in the earth. And this is his only wizard power. This is it. This is, this is all he got. Is this exciting? <laughs> Not exactly. Unless there's, you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe unless you're being like chased by goblins or something. So you got a little, little goblin. He's like. I'm going to throw this, I don't know what, I'm going to throw this at you. Because you're a cheat, you wizard. He's like, it was only $5, don't worry, don't worry about it. You tried to cheat me out of my due. And so he's like, okay, screw this. Into the, <laughs> into the chasm, right? He falls <laughs> into the. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm amusing myself here. <laughs> Which is the power of art for me. 
it was a way to just <laughs> amuse myself. I, and the, the bad part was I wasn't a good student because this is what I would do all day, right? I even had a teacher where I didn't know the answer to a, a question on a test. And I just drew a picture because I was bored of the whole, <laughs> the whole test thing. I was like, I'm done. So here's a picture of whatever. And they, I got it back and the teacher was like, Please do the <laughs> please do the assignment. I was like, uh, I had nothing for you, but yeah, maybe there's another wizard who also can, I don't know, shoot something out of his hand. I don't know, maybe electric. So we have Mr. I don't know, chasm maker. And this is uh, Lexor the lightning mage. And then what he hits kind of fries. Fry's goblins, the goblin friar. I don't know. Why does everybody have to pick on goblins? Right? Everybody picks on goblins. And it this isn't even good gestures, right? It's just gestures. I'm not precious with, I'm not precious with them. I just, I have no plan, no, just. Just make some gestures and see how it goes. One idea could lead to another idea, which leads to another idea. which leads to a whole page of just nonsense. <laughs> uh, but that, that's gestures. It helps you to make art. Gotta have the, the bzzz. So Cracklefoot, Leor the lightning mage, taking on two goblins. But yeah, gesture. I love drawing gestures because it's just flexing your imagination. You know, taking what you know. I like to make a list of what it could be and then just riffing off of that into all different directions. This one I actually like, this is actually cool. This guy's all, all right, I guess. But yes, anyways, that is gesture. So let's take a look at the schedule. Today was Friday the 16th. Can you believe that? Friday the 16th where we did shapes, heads and hands. I remember the hands. Mannequin, anatomy, sculpture, and gesture. Tomorrow is Saturday. And you know what time it is. It's freestyle day. And freestyle we're doing, well, my theme is cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. But you may do, draw whatever you wish, draw with me. Listen to me ramble while you know, 
you chuckle at my silliness and while doing your own drawing. That's always lovely. Sunday will also be freestyle cyberpunk. And then on Monday, we're taking it to a whole nother level with advanced. Where we will combine like all of the stacks, shapes, heads and hands, mannequin, anatomy, sculpture, gesture, and actual figure drawing. That's right. We're gonna look at photos of people and actually do this stuff that we were doing. So these might be quick to get to the, this will be the main presentation. I will be doing gestures from figures, anatomy and some shapes for figures. And I figure we'll do three, but I'll think about it over the weekend and we'll lock that down. We got to the end of the week. We're a little bit stronger, more flexible. We worked out our mind and our body. Good set, good set. And I'll see you on the next video. So take care.